Taking an interest in PC hardware is like breaking the dams of Isengard. Once you do so, you are hit with a seemingly never-ending river of confusing acronyms and impressive numbers that simply flood your brain. We have already made several videos on each and every PC component, and we still have more work ahead of us. Case in point, the graphics card memory. Just from differentiating VRAM from system RAM, going through all of its specs and then understanding the role it plays in achieving desirable in-game performance can be excruciating. And even then, there's the fact that it's not all about the VRAM, even though it is an important part. But there are also several types of VRAM. We're all familiar with GDDR at this point. GDDR5 has been used in most graphics cards for the last decade and is now being replaced by GDDR6. But there is another type of VRAM that's been finding its home in an increasing number of graphics cards over the years. We're talking, of course, about the titular HBM, along with its successor, HBM2 and HBM2E. With that in mind, we've made this video to shed some light on these new technologies to see just how good they are, both overall and specifically for gamers. So without any further ado, let's begin. HBM stands for High Bandwidth Memory. The name itself is a dead giveaway of what it's all about. High Bandwidth. But that's not all that it's about. In addition to having more bandwidth than either DDR or GDDR memory, HBM also uses less power and takes up less space on the PCB. This is achieved by stacking multiple dies on top of each other. Imagine a quadruple pancake on a single plate and, well, you'll kind of get the idea. So if a single HBM die has a 1024-bit memory bus, and it does, and a bandwidth of 128 gigabytes per second, which it also does, then when you stack four of them together, you get a 4096-bit memory bus and 512 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, which is pretty much just insane. Each HBM die also supports four gigabytes of memory, so with four stacks, you'd get 16 gigabytes. Even though it's not jaw-dropping by today's high-end standards, it's going to keep in mind that HBM is a technology that debuted in 2015. Back then, these specs were leagues ahead of GDDR5. Still, only a handful of AMD GPUs ever used this technology. HBM was featured on Radeon R9 Fury, the Radeon R9 Nano, the Radeon R9 Fury X, and the Radeon Pro Duo. It wasn't until its successor, HBM2, entered the scene that this technology saw a somewhat wider implementation. If this technology were a movie franchise, HBM2 would be a highly praised sequel, something along the lines of The Empire Strikes Back, The Dark Knight, or Shrek 2. It's greatly improved upon the key features of its predecessor by offering twice the bandwidth, making it so that a single stack could support 8 gigabytes of memory, and ramping up the number of total supported stacks from 4 to 8. And to spare you the mental math, this equates to a maximum bandwidth of over 2 terabytes and 64 gigabytes of memory. It made the original HBM look like old news, and yet the original HBM was still leagues ahead of GDDR5. As such, it found a home in some of the most powerful GPUs of its time. We're talking the likes of the AMD Radeon RX Vega series, the Radeon 7, several Radeon Pro GPUs, as well as Nvidia's Titan V and the Quadro GP100. The future of HBM was looking bright at this point, but this was not taken as a call to stagnate. And then in 2018, Jetic announced the HBM 2E and the exponential growth just kept coming. The ramped up version took the specs to a whole new level, increasing the maximum bandwidth to 307 gigabytes per second, the maximum stack size to 12 dies, and the maximum memory per stack to no fewer than 24 gigabytes. That's well over 3.6 terabytes of bandwidth and 288 gigabytes of RAM if all 12 dies were used. The bandwidth per die didn't quite double in size, but with the expanded stack size, it still reached brand new heights. Since then, Samsung and SK Hynix have both announced their own variants of HBM 2E, which only support up to 8 stacks and 16 gigabytes of memory per stack, but offer even greater bandwidth. Samsung's HBM 2E offers 410 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, and SK Hynix's take it up even further to 460 gigabytes per second. HBM 2E still hasn't found a home in any GPU, but this is likely to change as AMD starts to entrench itself into the high-end GPU front that has been dominated by NVIDIA for the longest time. 
Chances are this has got you hyped to get an HBN graphics card and take your gaming to the next level. If that's the case, let's just, um, let's slow down for a minute. We've already made a comparison video where we look at how various iterations of HDMI stacks up against the latest versions of GDDR, so check that out if you'd like a more in-depth analysis of how they stack up. The link is in the description. But the short of it is this. For the purposes of gaming, HBM is only superior on paper. Now, what do we mean by this? It's easy to get desensitized when you're exposed to all of these ridiculous specs. 288 gigabytes of RAM? It makes you wonder how you could ever get by with a single digit VRAM. But the truth is, you can. 8 gigabytes of VRAM is plenty for high-end gaming. And because gaming is all we are concerned with when making this argument, you don't get much out of any surplus either. Here's the cold, hard truth. Games can only make use of the specs they've been optimized to make use of. If you're booting up an old game from a single CPU core era, the game will use a single CPU core to do everything it needs to do. Doesn't matter if you have 4, 6, 8 or even a 20 core CPU. The game's been made to utilize one core, so that's what it'll do. The same goes for some GPU specs. Sure, the better the GPU, the better the in-game performance, but there is a limit to how high it can go. Video games simply aren't made to take advantage of all of that extra VRAM. And they certainly aren't made to take advantage of the kind of bandwidth HDMI offers. They could potentially be made to do so, but this would be pointless on the developer's end since gamers aren't expected to have these kinds of specs. This should tell us a lot about the target demographic that's interested in HBM-equipped graphics cards. The only way to make HBM truly shine is to put it into an environment where it'll be surrounded by GPU and memory intensive applications that can make use of this kind of VRAM and memory. And that's why they're not made for gamers. Instead, these GPUs are targeted at professionals building high-end workstations. So yeah, if you're a gamer, there's no need for you to concern yourself with HBM. It doesn't hurt to know what it is, but it's not something you should aim to put inside your build. Especially since HBM is more expensive to manufacture, which in turn means that GPUs that use it are quite expensive. And that about does it for this video. In conclusion, HBM is another type of VRAM, but it packs way more heat than GDDR. Nevertheless, you don't really need this kind of heat for gaming. In fact, it's wasted on gaming. So regardless of whether you're on a budget or building the ultimate high-end PC build, stick to GDDR graphics cards. On our website, we've made custom builds with budgets ranging from $300 to $5,000, each designed to offer the best performance money can buy with the given budget. And not one of them needed HBM. If only as a great starting point that you can then further customize to your needs. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. You can let us know if you have by liking it, sharing it with friends, and leaving a comment. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to enable notifications. Sometimes new videos like to be like ninjas and sneak past viewers, so having notifications enabled is always a good idea. We upload a new video every week, so it shouldn't be a long time until the next one is out. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.